Through the Green Gate, the Alice and Jerry book. Through the Green Gate by Mabel O'Donnell, illustrated by Florence and Margaret Hoops. This is from 1957. It was originally from 1939. Miss Lizzie, someday you may want to go to Friendly Village. Of course, when you get there, you will want to see all your old friends, Alice and Jerry, Bobby and Billy, and Patty and all his pets. You will want to call on Mr. Carl and say hello to Mr. Andrews and his fruit store on River Street. Maybe Cobbler Jim will let you sit on the end of his workbench and talk to his old black cat while he mends your shoes. But whatever you do, be sure to take a walk down Green Gate Road to see Miss Lizzie. You don't want to go home without seeing Miss Lizzie. Green Gate Road runs right by the houses of Alice and Jerry and Mr. Carl and out to the edge of the village. Then all at once it stops. I suppose you think it stops because there is no more village and no place else to go. But that isn't it. Greengate Road has to stop because right there at the end of the road is a little stone house with two fat red chimneys. Around the house is a garden where gay colored flowers grow in the summertime. Around the garden is a wall and in the wall is a green gate. It is just the kind of gate that makes you want to look through the cracks to see what is happening on the other side. No one in Friendly Village knows how old the house and the wall really are. But that isn't important. The important thing is that Miss Lizzie lives there. Miss Lizzie's hair used to be yellow, but now it is turning gray. Most of the time she is dressed in blue because she likes blue and because that is the color of her eyes. She is little, but oh my, Mr. Carl likes to say, and that means that Miss Lizzie can do more work than any two people put together and do it in no time at all. It means that when she is cross, she is very, very cross, and that when she is happy, she is happy all over. On Sunday mornings, Miss Lizzie puts on her best hat with the gay red roses and walks down the street to church. Then it looks as if she were no bigger than Alice and Jerry and the other boys and girls who are waiting for her. But when she walks in again at the garden gate and takes off the hat with the gay red roses, then she grows up. Anyway, she is big enough to look over the garden wall. Time and time again, Alice and Jerry and some of their friends stand outside the garden wall and call, Hurry, Miss Lizzie, come as fast as you can. We have something to show you. Then Miss Lizzie will look right over the wall with a smile on her face and a twinkle in her eye. She will try to make her voice sound cross as she calls, Oh dear me, what do you want now? Of course, if you want to be friends with Miss Lizzie, you will have to like Amber too. Amber is Miss Lizzie's old yellow cat. The thing Amber likes best to do is sleep in the sun on the old stone wall. Because Miss Lizzie lives at the edge of the village, the cornfields of the country are right at her back door. Whenever Jerry and his friends go to the woods, they have to walk by Miss Lizzie's door. On the way home, they always stop to show her what they have found. Whatever they find, frogs, eggs, or tadpoles, or queer-looking spiders, they always give her a few. Summer or winter, spring or fall, 
all the boys and girls come to see Miss Lizzie. They tell her all the exciting things that happen, and they tell her all their troubles. Miss Lizzie smiles at all the exciting things, and she helps them out of all their troubles. One day, Jim Winters, who lives at White Fence Farm, was in great trouble. He didn't want anyone to know about it, but he had to have help from someone, so he went to Miss Lizzie. I suppose you will want to know what the trouble was all about. I suppose you want to know what Miss Lizzie told him to do. Your questions won't stop until I tell you. So here is what happened. And the next section is called Bang. We'll read that next time. Have a good night.